I'm at Harvard. I'm seeing some super innovative stuff that you might think of as robotics, but it's very different than your normal image of human-sized things made out of metal. My name's Connor Walsh. I'm a faculty member here at Harvard at the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. I got interested in robotics just because I liked making things that were cool, and robotics are just fundamentally cool. The focus of our research here in, in the lab is on making software-able robots that augment human performance. So for a healthy person, how do we make them even better? And for someone who has lost some performance, how do we restore that performance so they can operate at a more healthy level? One of the projects that we're working on is a soft robotic glove. So it's like any regular glove, but it has embedded air chambers, and then you can pressurize those chambers. And when you do that, it basically helps the hand to close and to open. You know, the human hand is a heck of a competitor. It is, you know, the number of degrees of freedom and how you inherently understand and you get feedback. When someone has an injury, such as a spinal cord injury, we can restore their grasp function to more normal levels. So they can now cut food you know, because they have the glove, or they're able to write because they have the glove. We think that there's a real opportunity to basically come up with next generation assistive technologies that really eliminate disabilities. A robot that can start to do human tasks, we're at a lab that's at the forefront of this. And so you need the guys who understand the software control part and people who actually know how to build things. Hi. Hi, Bill. I'm Rob Wood. I'm a professor of engineering and applied sciences at Harvard University. So a lot of what we do is bio-inspired. We're building devices that have forms similar to what their biological counterparts are. And there's good reasons for that. If we say we want to build something small that can fly around, it makes sense to look at what in nature is small and flies around. And so in particular, we have a project called RoboBees, which is creating collections of small autonomous flying vehicles inspired by and of similar scales as insects. You can certainly envision them uh, in uses where you wouldn't want to put a human or an animal. So hazardous environments, uh, exploration, search and rescue. We chose this kind of project because it's really hard. So it involves challenges that must be met from the ground up. That's cool. Let's build robots that could go in places where we wouldn't want to put a human. Build robots that would directly interface with humans. All of these things I think would be quite beneficial to build things new ways, making things as small as a little insect, augmenting body capabilities using soft materials. It's very cutting edge.